In early January 2016, a crude oil tanker arrived at the port of Yingkao to discharge one million barrels of Duri crude oil loaded at the port of Dumai, Indonesia. The cargo instructions stated that the cargo should be heated to 40 degrees Celsius and the slop tanks were to be heated to 50 degrees Celsius, but when the tanker arrived and the crew began crude oil washing, the cargo temperature was much lower than this. After bottom crude oil washing, the crew found large amounts of sludge when sounding the first tank. When other tanks were washed, the result was the same. Crude oil washing was not reducing the sludge, it was increasing it. In the end, 4,500 barrels of sludgy crude were retained on board, and it eventually solidified. As a result, the cargo retention clause was invoked by the charterer, resulting in the ship owner being liable for 360,000 US dollars. This made the voyage uneconomical and created problems for preparing cargo tanks ready for loading the next cargo. As you go through the module, you'll learn why this happened and, more importantly, how it could have been avoided. Effective crude oil washing removes sludge, sediments and residual crude oil deposits on tank structures by using tank cleaning jets at high pressure but it requires suitable crude oil at the right temperature as a washing media. The main objectives are to maximize cargo outturn, two, control the buildup of sludge, two, minimize the amount of water washing if required, and to minimize the oil content of any heavy water ballast discharged to the sea. Throughout this module, we'll look at the effectiveness of different types of crude oil as washing media and we'll consider the different factors that will determine the degree of crude oil washing required. We'll also look at the different programs that can be used and we'll outline the various aspects to consider when planning a suitable program. In order for us to understand how crude oil lays down residues, we must first look at its chemical makeup. Commonly known as petroleum, crude oil is a liquid comprised mainly of different types of hydrocarbons and organic compounds. Although hydrocarbons are the main components, the composition varies significantly for different crude oil grades. Depending on the type, crude oil contains three main compound types in varying proportions. The first types of compounds are known as paraffins. These are hydrocarbons with a simple molecular chain structure. They range from methane, which is a gas, to pentane in liquid form, to such compounds as hentriacontane, which are large molecular chain structures known as waxy solids. Crudes with a large proportion of long molecular chain wax-like paraffins tend to lay down significant amounts of sludge. The next type of compounds are known as aromatics. These are hydrocarbons with a more complex molecular structure in the form of rings such as xylene, benzene and toluene which act as solvents. Crudes high in these compounds are very suitable for crude oil washing. However, crude oils high in aromatic compounds tend to be viscous and often require heating to be loaded and discharged. They will leave residues if allowed to cool too much. The last type of compounds to consider are naphthalenes and asphaltenes. A subgroup of aromatics, these are hydrocarbon compounds with very complex molecular ring structures. They also contain nitrogen, oxygen and sulfur and crude oil containing significant amounts of these compounds are associated with tar or bitumen-like substances. As we have learned, crude oil has the potential to deposit sludge and residue. An important factor in this is the temperature at which it is carried. 
and this is particularly important when considering the pool point temperature and cloud point temperature. Pool point temperature is the minimum temperature at which a substance remains in liquid state and continues to flow. The pool point temperature is sometimes provided on the certificate of quality when the cargo documentation is handed over on completion of loading. Cloud point temperature is the temperature below which crude oil starts to deposit wax crystals and take on a cloudy appearance. This is particularly relevant to crude oil that is high in paraffinic wax. Although the cloud point temperature will not be stated in the certificate of quality, it is useful to know in order to determine the suitability of paraffinic crude as a washing medium. Issued by the Institute of Petroleum, Hydrocarbon Management HM40 guidelines for the crude oil washing of ships' tanks and the heating of crude oil being transported by sea provides a list of all the characteristics of crude oil, including total wax amount, pour point and cloud point temperatures. These two temperatures are very important when determining the suitability of crude as a washing media. While most crude oils lay down sludge and other residues to some extent, two crude oil types can result in significantly higher amounts, even with crude oil washing. Waxy or high paraffinic crude oil is defined as having a wax content greater than 6% by weight. Their pour point and cloud point temperatures tend to be high, and they often need to be heated when loading, carrying and discharging. The second type is crude oils with high viscosity, which are high in aromatic and naphthalenic compounds. They tend not to form sludge and are low in paraffinic wax. They also tend to have a high pour point and need to have a viscosity of 250 centistokes for them to flow. They may also require heating, otherwise they can leave large amounts of residual cargo upon completion of cargo discharge. Before we look further into crude oil as an effective washing media, let's take a look at how sludge accumulates in tanks. After loading and during a voyage, crude starts to separate into its constituent hydrocarbon compounds. The heavier and more complex hydrocarbons sink to the bottom and, depending on the pressure, the lighter fractions tend to be released into the ullage space. If waxy paraffinic crudes are not maintained above their cloud point temperature, they will start to flocculate. This is the effect of the long chain paraffinic compounds interlocking to form clusters of plate or crystalline structures suspended in the crude. Water and non-hydrocarbon sediments that were in suspension in the crude oil, such as sand, silt or mud particles, settle on the bottom or mix with paraffinic sludge. Heavy naphthenic hydrocarbons in contact with the ship's structure may cool stick to the ship's structure and form tar-like deposits that are unable to be discharged. Additional sludge might also be formed when waxy paraffinic crude comes into contact with aromatic crude. Residual aromatic crude that comes in contact with the ship's structure cools to the point where the viscosity is so low that it either flows very slowly and will accumulate on the tank bottom over time or it will not flow at all and will deposit on tank structures. If crude oil washing was not carried out, lighter paraffinic compounds such as methane and propane would evaporate further during ballast passage, making the sludge denser and more difficult to remove. With successive cargoes, sludge and sediments would accumulate over time. As we learned earlier, Crude oil is made up of a mixture of paraffinic, aromatic and naphthenic hydrocarbons. The aromatic solvent compounds are able to dissolve sludge and other residues, making many crude oils suitable washing media. However, some crude oils are more effective than others. There are several things to consider when determining a crude oil suitability for crude oil washing. These include the 
wax content in percentage by weight or mass, and the temperature in degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. Another factor to consider is the viscosity of the crude. Measured in centistokes or millimeters squared per second, viscosity is a measure of a fluid's resistance to flow. A fluid with a large viscosity resists motion. But you can make the fluid flow more easily by heating it and reducing its viscosity. Crude types with high viscosity need to be heated to ensure they will flow effectively through the centrifugal pumps. The last factor to consider is the vapor pressure of the crude oil. This is the pressure exerted by vapor when the condensation rate and evaporation rate of a liquid within a cargo tank is balanced. Although it depends on the temperature of the liquid, the higher the vapor pressure, the more volatile the liquid is. Reed vapor pressure, or RVP, is a common measure of the volatility of petroleum. It is defined as the absolute vapor pressure exerted by a liquid at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or 37.8 degrees Celsius. Crudes with a low RVP have a low volatility and the higher the RVP value, the more volatile the crude. Generally, any crude with an RVP greater than 7 pounds per square inch, or 0.88 bars absolute, should be considered high. Crude oil low in paraffinic wax content and with a low RVP is preferred for crude oil washing. We've just looked at the factors that determine the suitability of crude oil as a washing media. But there are certain conditions where crude oil washing may be counterproductive. For instance, crudes with high paraffinic wax content may have limited effectiveness if the temperature is not high enough. Crude oil of this type must be carried and maintained at a temperature of at least 10 degrees Celsius above its cloud point temperature. If used as a crude oil washing media from a slop tank, the Temperature should be maintained at 10 degrees Celsius above the average cargo temperature or 20 degrees Celsius above the cloud point of the cargo. When these cargoes are carried, specific heating instructions will be received from the charterer or cargo interests. It's extremely important that they are strictly followed to avoid claims for the shortage of outturn due to paraffinic sludge deposition. Similarly, Aromatic crude oils often need to be heated for discharge and crude oil washing due to their high viscosity. They must be at an appropriate temperature where the viscosity is no greater than 250 centistokes to avoid large amounts of residual cargo remaining after discharge. However, aromatic crude oils may be transported at a lower temperature as long as they can be heated to the required temperature before arrival at the discharge port. Again, the charterer will often provide clear heating instructions when carrying crudes of this type. The last type of crudes that may be unsuitable as a washing medium is volatile crude with a high vapor pressure. They can release the lighter gaseous compounds during crude oil washing, potentially resulting in large vapor pressures building up within the cargo tank. When this happens, it may be necessary to reduce the pressure by venting, if permitted, otherwise crude oil washing will need to be stopped. While volatile crudes of this type might be effective as a washing media, the loss of the lighter gaseous paraffinic compounds from the cargo is undesirable. Now that we know how to determine the suitability of crude oil as a washing media, Let's take a look at how sludge and sediments are removed. The tank cleaning jets pass over the residues at the tank bottom and penetrate the bottom paraffinic sludge deposits. These mix with the solvent-rich crude oil and turn it into a slurry-type material that moves towards the suction bell mouth. Another pass of the jet will cause the sludge to liquefy further, allowing it to flow even more quickly. Residues from naphthenic hydrocarbon compounds tend to cling to tank structures, but they are moved by high-pressure washing of the surface. 
When using a crude oil washing media that has been recycled in a slop or sauce tank, paraffinic wax will increase as crude oil washing continues, even though it might not be considered waxy paraffinic crude. As the wax content increases, the solvent quantity decreases. This reduces the effectiveness of the crude as a washing media, resulting in a high amount of sludge being deposited in the source tank. If possible, you should avoid crude oil washing cargo tanks that contain residues of waxy paraffinic crudes with aromatic crude, or vice versa. This will result in asphalt or bitumen-like sludge being deposited. As well as determining the suitability of crude oil as a washing media, we must also consider when we need to crude oil wash and how many tanks to include in the operation. The regulatory crude oil washing requirement is covered by Marple Annex 1, which states that approximately one quarter of the cargo tanks should be crude oil washed for sludge control purposes on a rotational basis. This must be in accordance with the procedures specified in the crude oil washing operations and equipment manual. Though it is worth noting that no tanks need to be crude oil washed more than once every four months. In many cases, Marple minimum crude oil washing to control sludge accumulation is only necessary for tankers involved in short voyages, but this will depend on the types of crude being carried as some crews can lay down a lot of sludge. When assessing crude oil washing, it's helpful to have a table showing the tanks that have been crude oil washed for tracking purposes. As light crude oil has a low density and generally flows freely at room temperature, it might only be necessary to bottom wash a tank carrying this type of cargo. This is particularly the case in tanks without side structure such as those found on tankers arranged with center tanks. Upon completion of cargo discharge, soundings of cargo tanks will reveal the amount of residual sludge left behind. The volume calculated from the sounding is known as the non-liquid cargo remaining on board or ROB. Non-liquid ROB must be considered when reviewing the effectiveness of a sludge control plan and the schedule for crude oil washing may need to be reviewed after each discharge. Lastly, if there is a possibility that it might be necessary to increase the draft and propeller immersion in very rough sea and high swell conditions, then you must crude oil wash the cargo tank designated for heavy weather ballast. When preparing for inspection, survey and repairs, any cargo tanks that need to be water washed on ballast passage must undergo a full crude oil wash during discharge at the previous ports. If hot work is required in a cargo tank, then you must water wash the tank that is being repaired, as well as the surrounding tanks. Company procedures and repair facility or port requirements will dictate the number of tanks that need to be water washed. Where structural surveys are planned on the ballast passage, cargo tanks that are due to be inspected also need to be water washed. This is a classification society requirement and the recommended washing programs to be used will be described in the approved crude oil washing operations and equipment manual. In some cases, the amount of crude oil washing may be specified in the cargo discharge instructions. The charterer may be concerned with maximizing cargo outturn. When this happens and the crude is suitable, the master of the vessel will be instructed to perform a full crude oil wash. In this case, the time available for crude oil washing in excess of the allowable discharge time will be specified in the charter party. The charterer may want the vessel to comply only with its obligation under the Marple requirements and so may not want to extend the discharge time. Additionally, for particularly volatile light crudes, the charterer will be conscious of trying to avoid the release of light fractions as this can degrade the crude. When full crude oil washing is required, 
it's essential that there is little or no non-liquid ROB at the end of discharge. If there is any liquid ROB, it must be identified and agreed as unpumpable with the attending cargo surveyor. This refers to residual liquid cargo in tanks that cannot be discharged by ship's pumps that are assumed to be in good condition. The additional time taken to crude oil wash for operator purposes, such as repairs, dry dock and surveys, is outside of that specified in the discharge instructions or charter party. Unless a specific agreement is made between the owner and charterer, any additional time for crude oil washing will be for the owner's account. There are three main ways in which the crude oil washing of a cargo tank can be conducted. A full wash will usually be carried out when the crude oil in a tank was not suitable for washing and it needs to be fully washed with another, more suitable grade when it has been emptied and stripped dry. The tank will be washed when the second grade of crude oil is being discharged. A full wash means that the whole of the cargo tank is crude oil washed. For this operation, the tank cleaning machine settings typically have the nozzle directed between 120 degrees to 0 degrees from the vertical. Multi-stage crude oil washing is conducted in stages, usually a top wash, followed by a bottom wash. The top wash is used on the bulkheads and the underneath of the deck, with the nozzles typically directed between 120 degrees to 40 degrees from the vertical. It is normally carried out on one or multiple tanks and always uses the crude oil grade being discharged. However, the number of machines to be used is limited by the available pressure of the tank cleaning main and the throughput of the cargo pump supplying the crude oil. Washing media and residues are discharged ashore together with the bulk cargo. Multi-stage crude oil washing allows the bulkhead area to be washed when it becomes exposed during bulk discharge, leaving just the bottom to be washed during stripping. This method optimizes the crude oil washing time needed during discharge. Bottom crude oil washing means washing the tank bottom and the lower tank structure. The approved crude oil washing operations and equipment manual will specify what is right for your vessel, though it will typically cover the sector from 0 to 40 from the vertical. Bottom wash is normally carried out on individual tanks where the tank is kept more or less dry or when less than 30 centimeters of cargo remains to be discharged. As such, bottom crude oil washing is typically undertaken during the tank stripping operation. If the tank contains light crude oil and the bulkheads are smooth, then only bottom washing might be necessary. As we have said, when crude oil washing, it's important to consider where the washing media will come from. Essentially, there are two main ways of setting the cargo pipeline system for crude oil washing. We'll look at open cycle crude oil washing in a moment, but for now, let's concentrate on closed cycle crude oil washing. Closed cycle crude oil wash uses crude oil from one tank and returns it back to the same tank to be used as a washing media. In other words, the crude oil used is recycled. This method is used towards the end of discharge, when the bulk discharge is near to completion and when bottom washing is to be carried out. In most cases, the washing crude is retained in one or even both of the slop tanks. These are normally filled to around two-thirds full, though the actual filling level will be specified in the approved crude oil washing operations and equipment manual. This crude is discharged after completion of all crude oil washing and final stripping. In this case, crude oil washing media is also used for driving the stripping eductor. If it has been agreed with the cargo receiver, 
Closed cycle crude oil washing is also used when washing tanks that have already been fully discharged and are being washed with crude from another grade. However, recirculating the same crude oil as a washing media presents some problems. Firstly, the crude oil returning to the source tank will contain a reduced amount of cleaning solvents after dissolving the hydrocarbon based residues and sludge in the tanks that have been crude oil washed. Secondly, it will contain an increasing amount of paraffinic wax. In effect, the washing crude will gradually degrade as crude oil washing continues. This becomes a particular problem when crude oil washing with waxy paraffinic crude, even if it is at the required slop tank temperature. When using this crude oil type, the source crude should never be circulated more than once. Open cycle crude oil washing is where the washing media is taken from one tank or a number of tanks but is returned to another together with residues and sludge. In this case, the crude oil is not recycled. Often, crude oil is used from the bulk cargo being discharged and returned to a slop tank. The problem of using open cycle crude oil washing is that the level in the reception tank needs to be monitored very carefully to avoid overflow. This is why the cargo tank's high level alarm should be set accordingly because the washing oil forms part of the crude being discharged. Open cycle crude oil washing is used to prevent the buildup of paraffinic wax in the slop tanks. We've just looked at open and closed cycle crude oil washing. Now let's look at the various settings for programmable tank washing machines that you need to consider when planning a crude oil washing operation. The first of these is the pitch angle. This is the change of angle in the vertical plane for every rotation in the horizontal plane. You can often select different values of pitch angle. The smaller the pitch angle is, the more thorough the washing will be, but this will also extend the washing time. A pitch angle of 2 degrees is usually considered adequate for crude oil washing. The next thing to consider is Rotational speed this is the number of revolutions in the horizontal plane or azimuth in one minute usually quoted in RPM. Some types of programmable machine allow different rotational speeds to be selected. A rotational speed of 2 RPM is considered adequate for crude oil washing. Next, we look at the vertical angle or arc. This is the vertical range of washing angle required. Setting the lower and upper vertical angles determines the vertical washing arc of the tank cleaning machine. The last thing to consider is how many passes the tank cleaning nozzle needs to make for the set vertical arc. One pass is the movement of the nozzle between the two set vertical angles. When the nozzle makes a second pass, it returns to the starting position. In other words, two passes are equivalent to one cycle. Normally, it's only necessary to allow one pass of the nozzle for top crude oil washing, starting at the highest set angle and completing at the lowest angle. The set vertical angle range allows the nozzle to strike the bulkhead structures where oil residues remain attached to the tank structure after the crude oil has been partially discharged. The higher angle is set so that the gun or nozzle is pointing about 1 meter above the cargo tank's original filled level. The lower angle is usually 40 degrees, but this will be specified in the approved crude oil washing operations and equipment manual for a typical discharge operation based upon the cargo tank dimensions. While 110 degrees is generally satisfactory for a cargo tank filled to normal filling level, it's useful to know how to determine the upper vertical angle for a partially filled cargo tank in order to avoid washing areas of the tank that do not need to be crude oil washed. We start by calculating the vertical distance between the bottom of the machine standpipe and one meter above the surface of the oil. This will give us the distance below the standpipe on the transverse bulkheads where washing will start. The reason we start one meter above the oil level is to allow for sloshing of crude against tank structure 
that takes place during rolling and pitching during passage. We will call this distance y. To calculate the initial or upper vertical angle, it is a case of trigonometry. We can calculate theta by using the expression tan theta equals y divided by half the breadth. The angle we require is 90 minus the theta. Let's look at the example from the ship's drawing. We find that the standpipe length is 27.50 meters above the bottom, and the distance from the bottom to 1 meter above the oil surface is 20.92 meters. The breadth of the center tank is 22.8 meters. The distance y is 27.50 minus 20.92. This gives us 6.58 meters, and half our breadth is 11.40 meters. In this case, tan theta is 0.577, giving theta as 30 degrees. Hence, the angle we require is 90 minus 30, which is 60 degrees. For a bottom crude oil wash, a full cycle from a vertical angle of 40 degrees to 0 degrees is usually sufficient for most crude oil types. But sometimes 1.5 cycles or 3 passes may be required for paraffinic or aromatic crudes. When setting for bottom wash, the machine should start at the highest angle, typically 40 degrees, and finish at 0. Once we have determined the settings of the tank cleaning machines, we can calculate the washing times by using this formula. Here, theta represents the vertical washing angle. N represents the number of cycles. S represents the rotational speed and P represents the set pitch angle. Let's look at an example where a programmable tank cleaning machine is set to perform a bottom crude oil wash from 40 degrees to 0 degrees that will run for one and a half cycles or three passes. The machine is set to a program that gives a rotational speed of 2 rpm and a pitch angle of 3 degrees. When we apply these values to our formula, we see that the crude oil washing time is 40 minutes. Before we go on to look at batch discharges, let's see how you do with the following question. You are performing a top wash with a tank cleaning machine that has a rotational speed of 2 rpm. You have set the pitch angle to 2 degrees, with a vertical angle from 110 degrees to 40 degrees for half a cycle. Using the formula we saw earlier, we see that 2 multiplied by the number of cycles and the vertical washing arc, divided by the set pitch angle multiplied by the rotational speed, is equal to 17.5, which we round up to 18 minutes. When planning a crude oil washing operation, it's important to remember that the crude oil washing time needs to be minimized if it significantly exceeds the bulk discharge time. The charter party or cargo discharge instructions will specify the bulk discharge performance required and also any additional time allowed for crude oil washing. Sometimes, the expected berth occupancy time may be specified by the terminal and a penalty might be issued if it is extended. When planning crude oil washing, it's essential that the time used is optimized, particularly when all cargo tanks have been loaded with a single grade. A sequential or one batch crude oil washing program is where all the cargo is to be discharged in bulk and then each cargo tank, or in some cases pairs of cargo tanks, are bottom crude oil washed and then stripped one by one, or in pairs. This program can extend the discharge time significantly after the bulk cargo has been discharged. A two-batch crude oil washing discharge program is where the cargo bulk discharge is split into two batches, with each discharge successively. This is done in such a way that the time to bulk discharge the cargo in the second batch is more or less equal to the time it takes to crude oil wash and strip the cargo tanks on the first batch.
As the first batch completes, the second batch starts. In other words, the bottom crude oil washing operation is continuous, and the additional time for crude oil washing can be reduced to the minimum. Let's look at an example. Consider a tanker loaded with quantities of crude oil as shown. The cargo is to be discharged at an average bulk rate of 12,000 cubic meters per hour. After determining the settings of our programmable machines, we see that the bottom crude oil washing time for each machine is 40 minutes. As previous records from the cargo book show that it takes a further 5 minutes to strip each cargo tank dry, we know that 45 minutes is required for one tank. A logical way to assign tanks to each batch is to use wing tanks as one batch and center cargo tanks as the second batch. In this case, the port slop tank will be discharged and refilled to 60%, with crew to be used for closed cycle bottom crude oil washing and driving the adductor. The time it takes to bottom crude oil wash 11 wing tanks at 45 minutes each is 8.25 hours. During bottom crude oil washing of these 11 cargo tanks, the quantity of crude oil discharged will be 8.25 times 12,000. This is equal to 99,000 cubic meters. This is the minimum quantity that needs to remain in the second batch. However, we allow an additional 10% as we need some cargo remaining when we near completion of the first batch of cargo tanks. Here, we see the port slop tank has been emptied and refilled to two-thirds full. As the wing cargo tanks empty, the center tank suction filling valves are closed when about 70% full, or 8.50 meters in this case. This means 21,780 cubic meters remain in each cargo tank, and 108,900 cubic meters remain in the center tanks in total. As the wing tanks reach stripping level, they are crude oil washed one by one, starting at one port and then one starboard, and so on. As soon as the bulk discharge of the wing cargo tanks has been completed, the discharge of the center tanks commences. As the bulk discharge of the center cargo tanks nears completion, so does the bottom crude oil washing on the wing tanks. As the center cargo tanks reach stripping level, the washing of the starboard slop tank completes. One center is now ready to be washed. When bulk discharge completes on the center tanks, only two or three cargo tanks need to be crude oil washed, ensuring the operation is optimized. That completes this module on crude oil washing planning.